Okay, you'll see in some of the videos going over a lot of spine health. If you look at the spine, you have your cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral region. The coccyx is at the bottom. This is uh, kind of near and dear to me because of my disc issues. And it seems that I deal with it a lot. You got to remember, guys, your cervical, or um, your vertebrae, excuse me, they're all, look at them as individual joints. And if you know from the other stuff I've talked about with joints and mobility, your joints have no direct blood flow, blood supply. Okay? So, what that means, we've got to lubricate those joints in synovial fluid. The only way you can do that is moving them through a full range of motion. Most people don't do that. Most people sit all day, okay, and you get compression on these uh, discs. And by the way, you'll see in one of the videos, you get 60% more compression if you're hitting like a seated overhead press as compared to a standing overhead press because seated, your hips and these ankles can't absorb any of that shock, okay? Same thing if you've got a bad back or whatever. Sitting in general is terrible for you. Compressing the spine is 60% more than it should be than if you're walking around. So to heal it, this is one reason we got to look at. Okay, we do neck circles up here. T-spine sit-ups here. Really get some blood flow going through here. Washing it, I mean, synovial fluid. Upper back, a lot of people have kyphotic posture here. You want to open up. You want that to be mobile. Lumbar region, my discs that are shot are right here. If you looked at it from the side, the spine, which we, we have to get traction at that region, that moving those joints. Okay, again, we're going to be getting synovial fluid in there, creating a vacuum for those discs to be sucked back in. Okay, it's traction, it's pulling. You'll see some of the other stuff I gave for traction as well. But spine health is huge. I mean, I've talked about before how your teeth are an indicator of your health, overall health. So is your spine health, okay? If your spine is healthy and vibrant, you're going to be young, vibrant, strong. So very important to take care of your spine, guys. All right, guys, I was squatting earlier this week on Thanksgiving. Back squatting. So my back, as you know, if you've been following me, i got a couple herniated discs. It's starting to act up a tiny bit. So I thought I would recover some of the stuff I do to kind of uh, give me traction and loosen up that back a little bit. One of the things I've talked about before is walking with the ankle weights. As you can see, each step I take, okay, it's pulling down on the sacrum right there. And it's just kind of opening it up a little bit, giving you enough space so you can do a couple laps in the ankle weights. And the next few things i show you, some of them are taken from yoga, and I'll show you the reverse hyper as well. Great stuff for self-traction. All right, so we did the walking with the ankle weights already. I'll put this in between. Uh, you know, I'll get 10 sets of this in throughout the workout, at least 10 reps. So 100 reps. Even though I'm doing upper body today, it'll be giving me that nice pumping motion in, in the sacral joint, in the low back, and, and washing the fluid. You got to remember, that that's a joint, okay? None of your joints have a direct blood flow, so you got to hydrate it. And uh, when we're talking about the back, you're doing that through traction movements. So on that, you engage your lats, okay? You're not coming up all the way parallel. You let, pull your legs all the way underneath you. Okay, like so. Don't fight it on the way down. By the end of the workout, if I had 10 sets on that, it's going to feel pretty good. And this isn't the best uh, hyper machine, but it's still effective. You can even do it with the stability ball to reverse hyper. So that's the second thing. All right, two more quick ones you can do at home or wherever for the low back pumping motion. I, and I figured this out doing this with my students at school. You uh, take it from yoga. You got the downward dog, but if you do it in a pumping motion, so we're up. Getting slight traction there. The idea is to elongate the spine. But think about traction. That's exactly what you're trying to do. So some people say this is like mumbo jumbo when you're doing yoga. But I can tell you from the scar tissue I built up down there in the disc, this feels really good. So 
downward dog. And another one you can do, again, look at the spine. You're trying to elongate it. My hands are staying glued here. Child's pose, coming back. And you just keep stretching it. Again, these can be done in pumping motions rather than just a static hold. So if you put these four things into your uh, program for your low back, every workout, you're going to do a lot to enhance your spine health. Good. Alright, as you see the, the uh, angle here, the degree, it's about 85 degrees, not all the way up 90 degrees. Reason being, really trying to overload the, the front delt today. We're pressing a different angle. I'm guilty of always hitting inclines at the same angle as well, for most of the time, you fall into a pattern. The reason it's not all the way 90 degrees, straight up standing, uh, or seated shoulder press, when you're seated, 90 degrees, pressing straight up overhead, you have 60% more compression on the discs, okay, which is, is not good for the back. The reason being, your hips, knees, and ankles can't absorb any of that shock or that load. If we keep it back 80, 85 degrees, if you look at the angle of the bench where I'm pressing, it's not coming straight down on the spine. It's coming at it at a different vector, okay, intersecting it in a different way. So that's the reason for these. So I hit a set here so you can see what they look like with the fat grips. Alright, so you can see 85 degree presses, that's what they look like.